So very good afternoon to everybody and welcome along to our Business Spotlight interviews. My name is Ron Maycock. I'm the owner of Action Coach Castleford and Business Performance UK. And I'm delighted to be joined this afternoon by Matt Porter. A very good afternoon to you, Matt. Hi, Ron. How are you doing? Yeah, very good. Very good. So uh, Matt is the Managing Director of a business called Sportive HQ. And we'll be hearing plenty more from Matt in just a few moments. Um, but before we do that, I um, just really wanted to explain what the purpose of these interviews actually is. So we're surrounded by some amazing businesses, each with their own stories, some great ideas, and all based um, in this region, in the Yorkshire region. Now, these interviews help us share their journeys, showcase some of their achievements, and ultimately maximise their exposure, all in the name of abundance. And it's for the benefit of businesses right the way across the UK, and increasingly, actually on a global stage as well. So we do these in multiple countries, and we're, we're finding that we're giving access to UK businesses to a much wider audience as well. So... Um, Without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Matt. And uh, Matt, if you if you will, do you want to tell me a little bit more about Sportive HQ? Yes, certainly. Uh, uh, we're uh, primarily we started as an event company, uh, running public events uh, throughout the region, uh, attracting cyclists to come to our events. Our biggest one uh, to date was 1,200 riders uh, of an all-inclusive nature. So we even had hand cyclists, disabled athletes coming from all over the UK to join us because we insist on that inclusivity. Uh, but we've uh, branched out into corporate work, uh, cycling holidays, you name it. If it's involved in cycling, we're in it. Fantastic. And and how long have you been going as as primarily cycling? And uh, As you say, you started as events, but um, how, how long have you been going in its current iteration? In its current iteration, uh, since 2015, so we've got a good eight years behind us, but myself, I've been involved in events for the past 13 or 14 years. Yeah, fantastic. And you said the, the, the largest one that you've done was 1,200 cyclists or 1,200 entrants. What kind of event is that? Give me a, a flavour of what that might look like. That was completely different. That was a public sportive. It was uh, originally called Flat and Fast. It was the flattest uh, 100-mile cycling event in the uk at the time excellent uh, so do you do you work with some of the long-standing ones as well that you you're sort of um either co-hosting or piggybacking on or are these all, all all unique to yourselves well what people will see from us that our events are unique but we do also subcontract to help other organizers uh, within the industry uh, it's something that kind of happened within covid that Every organiser in the UK lost a lot of staff as staff drifted back into original careers. Uh, and so I put a post out there on LinkedIn, look, guys, I know we're, we're all rivals, but we need to help each other to get through all this. So I do quite a bit of help with corporate events, make sure they keep going, charity events. Uh, we're quite involved with the London to Brighton uh, events. Uh, I know it's quite a way for us, but we're, we're well known for our signage on such events excellent are you doing anything internationally now i know there's there's an increased demand for people especially doing cycling holidays to the pyrenees or to do stage of the tour de france or or the vuelta or or whatever it may we, be we have done in the past before brexit uh we used to take people uh and get them to ride up bon two, which is a bit of a bucket list challenge uh, attempting to ride bon two from the three different sides in a day and that took the time but i've got to say at the minute i'm learning about the new ecosystem of europe and what we need to do to get out there again and that's all carnets and things like that and and different licenses so it's all a change in price and structure and a, a change in what we've got to do which is one of the things next on the agenda it's possibly one of our biggest challenges at the minute and, it, and and it's amazing where those challenges have come from. Um, and I, I I've got a place down in the Pyrenees, and uh, you know the the there the was organised trips across the Pyrenees and this and the other, and, yeah. and specifically for Vontu and 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 so on and so forth. Um, what we're finding certainly down there is this that they're still happening, but these tend to be locals now organising it. 
but they don't have the yeah. traction and they don't have the market penetration to attract UK riders. So this is yeah. based on histrionics, I suppose, that they've got a bit of football. People have stayed with them in the past, but there has been a transition from these being UK businesses that base themselves in Europe for certain months of the year to yeah. actually now, if you're not there, then there's added complication in terms of employing staff and everything like that. You just can't get work permits these days. So, you know, yeah, it, has, it has thrown a bit of a kibosh on it. So so the, the main focus certainly since COVID has been more UK orientated. Is that the case? Have you, you focused more yeah. on the UK? It has for me. I mean, there's enough iconic challenges within the UK. Uh, I mean, this week, we're, I'm in the middle of a cycling trip at the moment. We're running down the northeast coast from Berwick on Tweed to Spurn Point. Uh, we've got, a, it's classed as a holiday, and we're, we're taking 12 cyclists. We've brought them up from uh, Yorkshire, drove them up to Berwick on Tweed, and then they're doing it in three stages through the week, uh, all the way down to Spurn Point. It's such a beautiful coastline. Uh, there's other iconic challenges that we're looking at, such as the Three Peaks Challenge, where they can walk up each of the peaks, but cycle in between them. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, uh, when you're doing these, are these primarily in a day, or are you doing accommodation and, and organising everything in terms of mapping this out over whatever time frame that they actually want to do this on? We, we take care of everything, so they just turn up and we've got their accommodation booked, all their food stops sorted, their routes sorted. Uh, so that one's in three days, but we do mega challenges, say, such as Way of the Roses, which is Morecambe to Bridlington. And we've done that either in one day, two day or three day, depending on what the client wants. Excellent. I was going to say, I was um, uh, subconsciously put off when I saw some of your uh, advertising <laughs> about it's coast to coast in a day. And I was thinking, if that's my only option, uh, best got on a training plan pretty quickly, I guess. So it's, yeah. it ain't happening. Uh, but if I could do it yeah. in two days or three days, then then that, yeah, you know, that sort of makes sense uh, a little bit more. It's the, yeah. the added thing that uh, the infrastructure around me, family and everything like that, you know, aren't set up to, to be the broom wagon. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'd need professional support on that. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I mean, no, it's that, all... that in itself has brought us corporate trade. Uh, because they have had people who've done way the roads in a day with us and seen what infrastructure and support that we give on such an event. And they've had the brainchild of a different event that they want to do for charity, where originally someone suggested, well, we could follow you in a car and do this. And they've gone, actually, I'd rather have a professional involved who's mm. going to know exactly what to do. And We've already been brought in this year for a challenge where some a uh, team of four people want to ride from Edinburgh to Leeds in a in a day, uh, and so naturally they came to us because they'd already done way the roads with us. Yeah, 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 yeah. And are you finding when when you say corporate, then is that normally the routine? So a corporate, a a large entity will do an event for their designated charity. And then they will get various people to engage with that to actually, you know, to to do the event. I, I guess. So is that when you're saying it's it's corporate, that tends to be their uh, CSR based, whatever it may be, that they're doing something for a charity rather than this is a team building day that we're doing corporate for. We do both. Uh, I mean, for Sky Betting and Gaming, we do the. Uh, annually a team building corporate event but they'll be raising money at the same time yes. it's their annual chosen charity and then there's other mega challenges i mean it wasn't our own job but we were working for a company called andy cook cycling who's probably the most well-known person in the uk for doing events and uh, we ran event control and support for pure gyms and they were doing a seven day, 24 hour a day challenge to connect every single gym in the UK from Aberdeen to Plymouth. Yeah. And yeah. I put the team together for that under their remit and we supported that event 24 seven. And it took them seven days. It was fun, uh, but very challenging. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's where we sort of have our expertise that if someone is going to engage us, they know they're going to get through the event. It's, it's interesting. I, 
I, I looked at a couple of things and there was, a, I'll not say which particular charity, but a, a particular charity that was doing a, an event from London down to Paris, typically to finish on, you know, Tour yeah. de France and coincide in the morning with, you know, uh, finish on the Champs Elysees kind of thing when everything's then finishing later on in the afternoon, and yeah, and I have to say what what stopped me doing it wasn't the prospect of the x amount of miles of cycling. I didn't quite buy into how the organisation was going to put me up, and uh, I you know their their only option really was co-sharing rooms and and personally i was going well you know i don't particularly want to you know and it was yeah. it, it 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 made it difficult to buy into that as an organized event because of some of the frustrations rather than yeah. going what a great thing i would love to do it yeah i think i'll do it on my own terms if i'm going yeah. to do that rather than have to do it in their kind of way and 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 that organization that lack of understanding of what that route is how far can i go how knackered am i going to be what time do i need to have stopped by what kind of yeah. refueling what accommodation all that kind of stuff i'm guessing that's what you do for people you make their life easier so they can whether I call it pleasure or 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 whatever whatever their motivation they can do these challenges these rides and actually not have to worry about all the other stuff no certainly i mean one of the things that i've learned over the last few years with great thanks to the nhs is the fact that i'm a type 1 diabetic cyclist and my blood sugar is monitored constantly uh through devices provided by uh, the nhs and i can tell cyclists what they need to eat when and what fuel will be best for them. So, such as a real sandwich is going to do you a lot more good long term than having some sugary sports products. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. So, it, 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 it's interesting because you, you're adding another dimension of, of personal experience that you can actually yeah. lend your weight to. So, in, in terms of the business and your marketing and how you attract people, what does that look like and what's the main route to attracting people to you as potential clients for the future? I think the social media in itself is so difficult to control these days. And with the varying amounts of social media and where the focus is, I think when it comes down to it, the best place is always going to be word of mouth. So part of that theme, you've got to put the groundwork in produce quality in what you do but then people will take that away and then if it's mentioned they will mention you yeah no absolutely and trying to leverage that uh yeah. is is often the key so with that in mind as a as a rough percentage how much of your trade comes directly from individuals and how much comes from cycling clubs and associations that are doing a ride together cycling clubs will always feel that they're better place to organize themselves whereas a lot of our things come from individuals but when it comes down to individuals say from a cycling club who've experienced the quality that we do they will then take it back to their club and say actually i think we're better place to go to this person when we're trying to arrange something like this so percentage-wise, I would say 80% of our business comes from individuals and that 20% is coming and growing in terms of clubs and corporate from those individuals that have already experienced the quality mm. that we're producing. So they're, they're spreading the word of mouth within the club rather than you yeah. signing the club up to organise their annual trip or their charity ride or whatever it may be. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Okay, excellent. So as an industry then, I mean, you, you you started to just expand on this, that there's been some challenges post-Brexit. There, yeah. there are obviously challenges in lockdown where people couldn't get yeah. out and you, you most certainly couldn't do group events. And even though they were outdoors, 
uh, there, there was some logistical nightmares, shall we say, um, you know, even just in fueling stops and, 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 and the like. So what are you facing at the moment that as an industry you, you're challenged by? I think there's been a drop off in event participation across the whole event sector. Uh, triathlon, cycling events, running events of people who kind of looked after themselves during lockdown who then said actually I don't need to do events anymore uh, but given that it's coming back slowly uh, the idea that you don't need to do events is great you can still go for a bike ride and I'd always advocate that but the group feeling of being involved in an event is what people will start to miss and that's where we'll grow again mm. Mm. Are, you, are you finding that there is a bit of a momentum swing back this i mean you know we've waited long and hard for for summer to start but finally it's here um yeah historically a lot of events have been done and dusted by now um this year i've not heard about as many and, and i don't know yeah. if that's me or is that you know the company that i'm keeping or is that there aren't as many events been organised and promoted in the same way. There aren't as many. A lot tried in 2021 when numbers were still very low and felt the numbers weren't adequate to support that. So yeah. I was very much of the principle, yes, we still need to show our face, even if we're not making a huge profit on anything, <clears throat> just keep going and make sure that we're still on the scene and we're still known. So, no, there isn't as many events this year. Yeah, yeah. because it, I'm, I'm guessing with the with the sportive, your 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 overheads for break even for putting an event on are still relatively low, but there will be a cusp of we we need that many sign up. T typically, against a maximum capacity, what's the the minimum percentage you could run a organized event not a holiday but an organized yeah. you know day event what what's your sort of cusp of yes we do it or we're we're commercially you'd need ourselves? you'd need 200 250 mm -hmm. uh, participants be looking at break even yeah. Yeah, yeah uh but if we were hitting say 190 and looking at losing a few hundred pounds we'd still do it you'd still do it yeah yeah yeah, yeah because it's it's important to keep that market place and are you finding there are people lining up to take those marketplaces or or not so much at the moment not so much at the moment okay, okay. and so one of the biggest losses uh has been the charity mm. in fundraising I mean, my background the reason why i started in events was fundraising so to keep our costs down and increase fundraising because I, the one thing i didn't want to do in this market is start reducing quality uh because I, I, there's that potential that you can start cutting corners reducing your quality and you'd be reducing your product mm. so i've started working with charities where we give them fundraising places for the events that they can get rid of but the people for free and they give people raise sponsorship by those places so they're getting some money and we ask that they give us volunteers to staff the event right excellent so, so they're not just getting it for free as you know you're just doing this because we're a charity it's a little bit of give and take so you're engaging absolutely. them in the actual uh earn the right to be main sponsor of or main main charity associated yeah. with that yeah yeah and I mean, two weeks ago, we ran an event uh, out of Newark, uh, Nottinghamshire, and they had, the, the, to date, raised over £2,000 for the event. Mm -hmm. And it just worked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. As, a, as a new format of the way we run the business. Yeah, no, excellent. And, and within the business then, is it yourself? Have you got a team of people? Do you work on volunteers? Do you work on people who you know, in part exchange their time for some small contribution or whatever, but aren't actually on the payroll? What What's your sort of structure look like? Structurally, we've got about 10 staff 
that we rely on for events uh, and they'll commit to that or oh, certain amount of events that we're doing every year. Uh, and they're the key players who have got a lot of experience within the industry and they can handle looking after volunteers on the day and they're all paid subcontractors. Yeah, excellent. So in terms of events, and again, differentiating between events and holidays and, and whatever, how many sportives, or whether they be corporate driven or or general sportives, are you actually doing per year? I'd say 10. Uh -huh. 10 per year, but we're looking at expanding how we do that and offering different things within the market. Uh, we're, we've been looking at a cross between sporty, ordac and reliability ride at the moment. Mm -hmm. And we ran a test event in April and it was very, very popular. It was half the price of the sporty, no signage for the event because a lot of people have navigation devices these yeah, days yeah. that they can use, but all the same support that they get at sporty. Yeah, yeah. So that was very, very popular. It's, so, it's, it's I think you've hit on on something there that most most people do have some kind of navigation, you know, and and they can download that from various different map systems or or whatever, whether it's already in the in in their system. But most people have either got a smartwatch, a phone, or something. Worst case, even if it's not dedicated just for cycling, lots of cyclists yeah. do have a cycling computer. So. Having having somebody stood by a sign going go go this way, mm, do you really need them? Because they don't stop the traffic on a main road. No. You know, they just say slow down, stop. You're coming to a main road, but yeah, you know. So the, the, there are ways of, of of doing it where it becomes less humanly intensive. Um, I guess actually on the day, the key is having all of that backup and infrastructure and the mechanics and the, you know, everything else that goes along with it. I think most people in cycling would prefer to have that than someone just going, well, it's this way kind of thing. So, yeah. I mean, in terms of that, when you're saying that somebody stood there, we can manipulate the navigation files so that it flashes up on their device to say, slow down junction ahead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it it can all be done remotely these days, can't it? So yeah. you know you can you can position that information you know directly to the rider rather than having it third party by someone else. So yeah, in terms of the future, you, you said that there's been some challenges that shaped yeah. a little bit of of what you're doing in terms of the balance between certain corporate charity events and working with the charities and and actually you know maybe doing more holidays and cycling trips and things like that. What do you see the future? What's what's next for you and where would you like to see it go? I'd like to do more corporate work. Uh, we're tending to head that way. And then people have mentioned who enjoy the sportives about not wanting to do the unsigned route. So we will continue with that. Mm -hmm. We'll expand on the unsigned routes as an idea and that, put it to market a bit further. Uh, but generally speaking, the, the crazy challenges for corporates, we love them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, it's a battle of psychology, of uh, getting these people through this crazy challenge and keeping their mindset going. It, it's something that we've learned over time is to learn to judge people's mental state while they're in, in the middle of, of some mega challenge and know how to put them on the straight and narrow as such mm. to keep them through it. So I'd love to do more work, more of that kind of work. Well, there's, the, there's various things that as an organisation we've uh, been involved with. We, we run something every year, uh, which is actually called the Kent Roads, uh, Kent Roads Challenge. And Kent was part of our community as a, as a business coach. Uh, sadly yeah. died a few years ago and, uh, uh, but but one of the areas was children with cancer that he was a, a very strong advocate of. And we came up with the Kent Roads Challenge, which, you know, from, from year to year, sometimes it's it's walk up the three peaks or whatever. Sometimes it's do whatever. But they, they've done Kilimanjaro. They've done, you know, various different things. And, and each time it seems to 
go up a level. Um, yeah. You know, and I'm and I'm waiting for the one that's a dedicated bike ride where they just say, right, okay, you know, th- this is what we're going to do. Just within our community of just of coaches, not not everyone associated with the coaching industry. You know, there's 266 of us in the UK. Yeah. So there's yeah. a sport of it in its own right, own right. And then we're obviously, you know, raising money for the foundations and things like that. So the corporate yeah. market is, a, you know, it, it it is a huge area where people will come up with a concept that they would like to support, but actually the depth of what that challenge actually looks like we don't really have that much of a clue. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And that's why we need people like yourself. So, you know, it's, yeah. uh, you know, and I, I, and I can see that sort of um, shaping a little bit along with having the, the, the safety net of being a popular organizer of short trips and cycling holidays and things like that. You know, that will, yeah. that will fill plenty of gaps as well, because, that's a, a big demand for that. And uh, and I can see that, you know, really being a two-pronged approach uh, for you sort of moving forward. Yeah. So um, so we're, we're, we're starting to uh, sort of um, approach the end of the interview. Um, are there yeah. any areas, Matt, that we've not covered that you want to sort of highlight in terms of where you are as a business, where the industry is going, or, or really, I guess, almost what that, you know, what it is that would make people get in touch with you and go, yeah, absolutely. You've got our back. You, you can gladly do all this organizing for us. We'll turn up on the day and we'll do the event. So anything that you'd like I, to add? I think when it comes to it, because we've had contact from certain clubs and at times people said, Oh, you're, you're very pricey or you're expensive. And I don't back down because in terms of price, we're giving you people the best quality. You, you're not going to get the same experience of someone who hasn't had 10, 15 years in the industry. Mm-hmm. I just think when it comes to an event, it's not something might go wrong. Something will go wrong. Mm-hmm. And it's how that's dealt with. I don't think there's many things that I haven't seen go wrong and dealt with it already. So... It's not a matter of paying for somebody to drive a van for you. It's paying for somebody who can overlook everything and already knows the possibilities of what could happen. Mm-hmm. So we're, we're focused on quality. And if somebody wants quality for what they're trying to achieve, then they should get in touch. Yeah, and there's, there's a really good uh, summation where... Um... The, the the sort of saying and it comes more from business and, and things like that but you know managers manage leaders anticipate they don't yeah. lead and actually that's what they're getting is the anticipation yeah. based on experience of what might happen and if it might yeah. happen could happen it probably has happened and therefore yeah. you know how to you know, keep that within your circles of control and say, we can adapt, we can we can still deliver a fantastic yeah. event that's going to be memorable for all the right reasons rather than yeah. for perhaps the wrong one. So it's a, a really yeah. good way of, of viewing it. And, and you know, uh, pr- price is just, that's, that's just based on perception. When people are going, yeah. oh, that's expensive, that's, well, that's their belief. If, yeah. you, if they're getting success, they'll turn around and say, yeah, and it's worth every penny and that's the value you add, you know. So, yeah. uh, and and the subject a bit, I guess, is in that enjoyment because if it's yeah. a brilliant event, it's worth every penny, you know, and yeah. if it generates more money for charity and it runs smoothly, brilliant. It'll attract yeah. more people and the more is more. So that's really good. Yeah. So, well, that yeah. does bring us uh, pretty much to the end. Um, so I really just uh, want to take this opportunity to thank Matt for sharing with us. It's a... Uh, uh, um, a, a, quite a unique uh, kind of offering. Um, it's not something that you come across in business every day, but what a great business model and it's, you know, really serving its purpose. So thank you for joining us. No problem. Thank you. Rob. Excellent. Um, if you like Matt, want to share your business, share your journey, highlight what you do and 
broaden your reach so that we can uh, promote your your business to other people across the UK and potentially further afield. Just get in touch when we post these videos, uh, these interviews. Uh, we always put details of how you can see the full interview, also how you can actually sign up yourself and, and record your own. Um, and again, it's all so that uh, we can share all these amazing journeys that are going on in our business communities. So thanks again to Matt for joining us and thank, thank you, you for everyone else for joining us and watching another of our business spotlight interviews. We'll see you soon. Take care. Thank you.